Hey YouTubians, it's Tony here from We Try Anything. The channel likes to try anything, so you don't have to. Today what we're going to take a look at is another watch from the Casio range, and this one being the Casio W756, which has a module number of 3100. Now this, this watch, I will feature the instructions listed below just to help you, um, you know, if you, if you do have this watch or are looking at buying this watch, um, it will help you work out how to, uh, you know, use this watch because it is a little bit complicated in, in for certain things. Now in this video, what we're going to do, we're just going to quickly look at what the actual watch is made up of from the Casio sports range. Um, and then we're going to talk about the sizes and stuff like that and the actual dials and stuff like that and then what we're going to do is just quickly delve into some of the functions that this watch has and then what we're going to do is then pop it on our wrist and say what it's like to wear so to kick things off this watch has a the usual casio resin um case to it which measures 43 millimeters pusher to pusher on the four pushers or 40 millimeters on the case diameter itself um it also has i've measured the actual lug just to help people on this one because i know sometimes uh, people do kind of ask what the actual lug size is and the lug size from lug to lug there is about 44 millimeters and as i say it is a resin plastic as what is the norm on most of the casio watches that i do tend to feature on this channel on the back it is the usual stainless steel affair and the actual talk when just finishing off talking about the case it does have a thickness of about 15 millimeters and um, the strap is around the 18 millimeters in terms of width and it is the usual resin uh, style of strap but it is a nice strap that does have any kind of peaks and troughs that I do find on some of the watches that Casio has. And it also um, has a nice smooth back as well, which is something like the Casio W753 that I've um, reviewed in the past. That had a nice, a very smooth back to the watch, which makes it quite comfortable in theory for, you know, everyday wear. Now you'll have to forgive the uh, this the state of this watch. This is a pre-loved watch which I've managed to acquire from eBay. And then, the reason why I do feature these some of these eBay purchases is just so you can see how this watch wears. Now, obviously, on the mineral glass um, dial window that's going on here, you won't see many scratches because I've used a little bit of poly watch and just uh, give it a quick polish here just to remove any kind of micro abrasions that this um, acrylic glass would attract. But, um, you know, other than that, if you do see like scratches and elements of wear, and especially on the start stop button here um, or pusher, as it were, it is for that reason. It is a pre-loved watch. But as I say, I like to preview or show you these watches from eBay, especially the Casio ones, just so you get an idea of how they do wear. Now, the Casio, um, as you can see, does have it denoted up here. It is an illuminator watch uh, with a... Um, water resistance of 100 meters and it is um it does it is powered by a quartz movement as well and if i press the light button at the top you will see the little led light which will have a little delay for about one to two seconds yeah as you can see and i've also popped a little link sorry a little clip to the right there just to give you an idea and um you know it, it is it's not it is quite it's not bad in um darkness for uh, reading the time and stuff like that as I say, it does have four pushers, and the actual display is a bit of a strange one for Casio in that um, normally the Casios, like for example this W800H uh, that I've got feet, you know, I'm currently wearing for today, um, it does have the actual time more prominent on the top, um, whereas you've got the date, obviously the day of the week, uh, nicely featured in that, you know, that kind of... Um, dot matrix kind of look to it which i quite like on some of the casios that are featured and obviously it does have the month and the day of the month really but the reason being is that it it it's for what i'm going to show you later on in some of the functions that this watch has right talking to some of the functions it does have daylight saving time and it also does have 20, 12 and 24 hour which is military time as it's known in the us of a and um, as you can see it is easily you can choose between 12 and 24 hours by just pressing the start stop button there very easy very simple um now the, as i said the functions now i am going to just quickly gloss over the functions as it will just kind of skim over them um i will be releasing a video later of, you know later on in the next couple of months just explaining how to use this watch and it will more more of a deep dive into how this watch will operate so you know please subscribe on the uh, to the please click on the subscription button uh, listed below. And also what I have done, as I said, I have linked to in some instructions on the Casio website if you do have this watch. Um, it's, and it's definitely well worth reading. 
So the first function, and this is what the main uh, kind of raison d'etre or reason for being this watch, is that this watch will, uh, it does measure two, um, not measure two different times, but it, with the actual display listed up here, when you go and stopwatch, obviously you do see the, you, you know, the usual thing, what you would associate with the stopwatch. But the reason why, it, it, it keeps the time going on here. Now, as soon as I activate the stopwatch by that, it straight away turns into like and uh, you know you see the two times going on here that is measuring and the reason being for this is that this may this will measure the total time and it also measures an elapsed time at the bottom so if you press stop start uh, you know if you stop the actual stopwatch or pause it it's still going on because it's measuring what the time is in total but if you restart the bottom one and it's not a lap time as such because well you could measure it as a lap time but as soon as you release it it kind of measures the time going on here differently to what's the actual total time. So it will measure the time that that's elapsed. Now this can be quite good for if you are running some events and stuff like that, where you need to know the actual total time of what's been happening or, you know, what would be the game time. And also if you want to stop the watch for any kind of stoppages in any kind of event that's going on, you do have an idea of how much time has elapsed, even though you do get an idea of the total time that's going on. So I'll just let that release and then I'll just reset that, stop that running. There you go. And it goes back to the time. But it also features a little on the stopwatch where you can preset the duration of the event and you're still going to stopwatch mode. And what you can do, if you keep pressing that, you can set up like a time there which it will allow for, um, it will count down the amount of time that you do pop in here and it will set in a lot you know it will beep when that happens and as i say the instructions list it can probably mention how to use it a bit better than what i'm saying here but it allows you as i say you know if you are refereeing an event and stuff like that you can set this watch up to beep after 45 minutes if it's the first half of a football game and stuff like that but it does a little bit more than that which i'll mention later on so i'll pop it back to stopwatch and then if I go to the next one, you do have the timer. Now with the timer, it is preset. So you can just choose preset times going on here. And then obviously once you're ready, you just press start, stop, and then you'll start counting down. And it does also have an auto, um, it, like a restart feature where you can set it up. So there's like a little, um, how can I say, like an in, not an infinity symbol, it's like a little arrows that go around. And um, what it will show you is that as soon as it goes down, like it's counting down from 40 minutes, it'll re you know, it'll beep and then it'll restart again, counting 40, counting down 40 minutes, which can be quite handy for some people. But that, that's not obviously just for 40 minutes, it's whatever you have set that timer to. But as I say, the timer is preset. So as I say, you, you know, you can again choose 45, 10. 12, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, etc. So you do have a little choice of the actual times you can use, but it isn't like you can't choose anything in between that as such. So there you go, I've just activated the actual, um, there's a little icon there which mentions the actual restart. So it will restart after it's counted down for 10 minutes or so. So, you know, it can be quite handy if you ever need that sort of function. The next one is intervals. Now this will count down up to, I believe it will count down up to nine intervals. And what I mean by that, I'm not gonna kind of go through it here, but I'll just quickly explain it. So if, I, if I'm if i doing like interval training, where for example, um, my first time is a three minute run, and then I'm gonna have a one minute rest, and then I'm gonna do a five minute run, I can then set up three intervals on this, where after three minutes it will beep, and then after one minute it will beep and then after the third interval a five minute run it will beep again just to give me an idea of what kind of intervals this will do now i mean obviously you can set it up for a bit more than that um you know obviously you've got up to nine intervals that you can change and it is quite interesting if you are doing that kind of um you know that sort of interval training where you you need a rest period and then you start going up in the intervals of what you're training so it can be quite handy in this aspect and then what you've got, you've got world time as well, um, where you can set the actual world time depending on which part of the world you're either flying to or which part of the world you're doing business or communicating with other people in. Just to give you an idea, so for example, this is our local time that the watch is set to, and this is the actual time for New York City. So obviously it's the usual five, five hours behind, but you can change that so you can change it for other parts of the world like Rio and stuff like that, Lisbon and London obviously. 
but it's based on what you set your main local time to. You can't really change it. It is based on that fact. And finally, what we come to is the alarm. Now, this alarm has two alarms in which it has the daily alarm, which means it will go off on a daily kind of premise. So if you set this for half seven in the morning, it will go off every day as long as it's activated at half seven every morning. And also it has an hourly signal, which means every hour on the hour, it will beep just to say that the hour has transpired. So, you know, an another nice little, little function in this watch. And that's it really. I mean, there's quite a few things that I, I have quickly glossed over because they are quite um you know they are quite um can be quite involved really in what you can do to set this watch up but as i say this watch is more you know it is not good an ideal watch for if you're like a referee as a backup watch so you can put in um all forms of you know like uh set it up for reminding you in the 45 or measuring 45 minutes and you could also measure below in the stopwatch how much time has elapsed so you could take that away seeing what time you've lost and stuff like that you know it does do quite a little bit in that aspect so you know it's a great little sports watch and especially for interval training and stuff like that you can set it up so you can just really notify yourself of when you're doing an animator training that involves you stop starting different parts of the training uh, schedule really so you know it's a nice little watch for that and especially the display it's really good in that you know it's nice big and clear so what i'm going to do i'm going to pop, pop it on my wrist and say what he's like to wear now on the wrist it is nice and comfortable i mean even though it is for about well i think i've said about 43 millimeters in terms of um the actual width of the watch or the kind of diameter including the pushers um it is nice and comfortable i mean it doesn't inhibit you know the usual inhibiting you know how my hands the movement on my hand and stuff against my wrist or anything like that it doesn't inhibit that and i do read that some people do find the positioning of the time a little bit difficult but in this i don't know i don't find that really i, f I find that you know it is quite um a clear and concise display really which has everything going for it when you you know you start flicking through the modes you know it's quite easy to access and obviously as you've got the start stop just here as opposed to trying to find it around whatever pusher would do it you know you've got it there you can just quickly start and stop times or elapsed times or total times you know at ease really and in terms of sizing as i said it is 43 millimeters and then comparing it to the casio w800h um as you can see you know it's 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 a little bit bigger than that. I mean, this is a real nice watch and I've done a review on, on the channel of the Casio W800H. And the other one I'll show you compared to the Casio F91W. So just to get an idea of the actual sizing of the case and stuff like that. I mean, obviously this is a, you know, a little tiddler in comparison, but you know, it is a, it is a nice sports watch really. And obviously, you know, if you can get it brand new, you know, you won't have the scratches that this will attract. But, you know, I, I do, as I say, I do like to show you how these watches wear sometimes on the channel. And, you know, you can get, I, I believe you can get it in a, 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 a negative display where obviously whatever's uh, like clear is black and then whatever's black on the LCD display is uh, clear really. So, you know, you can get that kind of negative display version, but I do prefer this one because it's, you know, it's, it's straight away, it's very clear, concise, nice, nice watch, easy to wear very comfortable on the wrist and you know if you are using it for um if you are like a referee or anything where you time in an event that has certain halves and certain segments that you're going to time then this might what this watch might be an ideal kind of secondary backup for your main stopwatch that you are using for these sort of events so you know it might be worth a watch considering and as i say there's instructions below to this watch um you know to help you understand it a bit better so thank you for watching this review. I hope you liked it. And if you did, then click on the old like button. It always helps. Um, if you want to see more watches, tutorials, products and stuff like that coming to the channel soon, click on the old subscription button below. And thank you for watching this video. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.